Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna make a whole bunch of little menu items you can control selecting with just one slider control. This is the kind of thing you might use to make like a old time iTunes album selector, or maybe like a Mac OS kind of dock, but this technique can be very useful in a lot of kind of FUI situations. Now this tutorial is gonna be very expression heavy, so I don't wanna scare you away. We're gonna go through it line by line, kind of break down what's going on, what these things mean, and then we're gonna look at transposing this or remixing this expression so you can use it on different kinds of properties, different kind of inputs, outputs. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be fine. I'm here with you, we're gonna take it easy. Now, if UX and UI stuff is what you're into, then I would highly recommend checking out some stuff from our sponsor. This week, it is Skillshare, where you can actually learn some real UI, real UX stuff using XD or Figma or all kinds of great things. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life, so you can move your creative journey forward from anywhere at any time. You can learn and grow short classes that fit into your life. Since in this tutorial, we're talking about some FUI and expressions concepts, perhaps you would like to learn more about UI and UX, maybe from senior UX manager of Google New York, Cynthia Moore. If you're unfamiliar with UX, then her course, Designing with a User-Centered Approach, should get you going. Even in motion design, when we're making fake or futuristic or fantasy UI, these things still need to be grounded in how someone would use them. And this is also just a very fascinating field and one that you might find very inspiring. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable and an annual subscription is less than ten dollars a month members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions and right now the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get two free months premium membership to Skillshare so here's the initial idea I have this grouping of things and I'd like for them to be highlighted or show which one is getting selected. When I choose one, I want it to get larger. And then when I select the next in the series, I want that previous one to become smaller again. So this is the initial idea, and we can start to build out our expression with known inputs and outputs kind of from there. Here's how the expression looks that I've put on the scale of all these squares, for example. I have these inputs up here in the variables, such as the selection that is linked to a slider control. So all that these lines are really saying is that the variable called select is this slider control over here. This variable called padding uh, links to this one. And this one here called ID just happens to be set to this layer's index number. But you can make that ID kind of whatever you want. But what's going on here and why do we have them in here? So this selection, the select slider here, is to choose which of the squares is highlighted, which one is gonna get bigger in our case. So the input, uh, we want to be a number. That's why we linked it to a slider control. I need to be able to select something by number. So I've made a variable called ID that's going to hold the number that this layer is in this case. This lets me check if something is true. For example, if I identify this layer as number seven, and the selection slider is at seven, that means it's a match and something should happen. So giving this layer an ID number helps us make this happen. And like I said, you can manually put something in there. So I've set it to be this layer's index number, which has limitations and benefits, but basically the order uh, in which things are gonna be selected is gonna be down to what order they appear uh, here in the layer stack. You can see the little index number over here. So what is this padding number? What does that even mean? Well. I want it to be able to control the animation a bit between say when number one is selected and when number two is selected. I want to hold some control over if the animation is maybe overlapping or if there is a gap. So number one finishes animating before number two starts moving or maybe they should overlap and flow into each other. But that's all the variables we need to set this up. I'm gonna skip over the calculations for now and get into the outputs. I know this has to be on scale because I want things to get bigger and smaller to show that things are being selected. So since we're dropping the expression on scale, then we need the output to be formatted the way the property expects. So we have uh, thing comma thing or uh, x comma x for us. Both parts are gonna be the same because I want uniform scaling. This is a two part property, so we got X comma X. I highly recommend building expressions like a sandwich here. Get your inputs and then get your outputs together. These are gonna be your breads. And then we're gonna pick what's in the middle. Uh, cheeses, meats, uh, fried portobello mushroom, uh, a milieu of spices and sauces and flavors that play off of each other in surprising ways. That's pretty much all an expression is. So what's in this delicious sandwich? What's going on in these calculations? In this case, there is one if else expression toggling us between two states. 
So if that selection, if the number selection is larger than the ID number, then we're going to do this thing. And if anything else is true, so if the selection slider is equal to or less than the ID number, which are really the only two states that can be true, it's either larger or it's not larger. And so finally, that logic elective is coming in handy for me. But what happens if these states are true or not true? In either case, we're setting this variable X, and that's what we needed for our output. So we need to set that X to equal something. And in each case, it's going to be a different something. So when the selection is larger, this first part, meaning the selection variable is greater than the ID variable, like if this layer is ID number six and the selector is at six and we are increasing to seven and beyond, this is what happens. X will be equal to this ease function where we are going to look at the value of that selection slider, which we know is increasing from the number that is this layer that we've assigned to it in the ID variable, in this case, that's six, and it's on its way up to seven, or as we can express it here, this ID plus the padding. So as it increases, we want the scale to change, get smaller. We want it to return to normal as we're leaving this number. So we remap the input range of ID to ID plus padding, and that's going to be remapped to the outputs of, let's say, this layer's current scale value multiplied by 1.5. So it's 1.5 times larger at its kind of apex when it's selected, and it's going to come down to the original scale value. And we're only taking the first part of the value because this is a two-part property, and we only need one of those parts. So as the selection passes six on the way to seven, the scale is going from a higher number back down to the normal value, in this case, 100% of the size. So how did we get to the larger number in the first place? What's the other half of that? Well, that's what the else is taking care of. So what if anything else is true? So whenever the selection variable is less than or equal to the ID number, for example, then we're doing the reverse. We ramp from the ID number minus the padding to the ID number, and those numbers are being remapped, being remapped to the original value ramping up to that value times 1.5 in this case. So it's the inverse journey. Now we can use ease or linear, ease in, ease out. That's all up to you and how you want this to behave. I prefer eased movement, so that's why I'm using the ease function here, but you could use the linear function as well if that's the kind of movement you prefer. But what does it look like in practice? Well, once we go ahead and we copy and paste this expression to the other scales of all of the layers, we can simply scrub through this slider and make them dance as we select which one we want to be highlighted, which I think is pretty nice. We can also keyframe that padding to make this a, a larger or smaller selection. But here we're using it on the scale. And that's why the output is formatted like this thing comma thing. What if we wanted to put that on, say, the rotation? Well, the rotation makes use of different expected output. So instead of X comma X, that's not right. It should just be X. It should just be one part and value zero isn't a thing, uh, it's just value. And maybe these numbers don't work, those don't make much sense, uh, so we need to kind of change those. Maybe they need to be kind of fixed values, perhaps, or value plus 360 degrees, we want to spin around. But it's pretty simple to touch that up real quick, and now we have scaling and rotation going on. How fun is that? But how about position, you ask? Well, rest your commenting keystrokes, my friend. It's a little bit more extreme, but we can do fun things with position. We just need to define X and Y variables separately so that we can manipulate them individually. So we get an if else for the X and an if else for the Y, just to keep it all nice and simple. Then we need to make sure that the output is in an X and Y format. Very nice, there it is. Then we need to make sure that the values are appropriate to the movement. So in this case, and I want them to move to zero comma zero, which will be right on top of their parent in this case. So they'll be moving to the middle. But with all of that in mind, I hope it makes sense how we might do this to 3D positions or to opacity or to any property really. It's all down to just modifying the outputs and these maths so that it all fits and makes sense. So maybe the sauce in the sandwich changes, but the essential ingredients have not changed. Now here are some examples. Uh, we have a little bit of a, a Mac iOS doc uh, that you would have seen in the intro. I just went ahead and parented some icons to the little squares and we have them scale up from anchor points down on the bottom. Maybe we mess with the padding a little so there's a little overlap in the animation. So that's a nice way to make use of this. Rather than having to keyframe all of these things getting bigger and smaller and whatever, we just have to keyframe the one slider and it uh, starts going great. Here we have a ring of squares that are gonna go into the middle and flip and change around as they come into the middle. So that's kind of a nice example. This is a great way to wrangle groups of things that need to come to a common point kind of one at a time. However, 
there are some limitations to this method. This is linear, meaning you can't jump from say number three of the series to number seven. You would have to run through, you know, four, five, and six to get your way there. Maybe I'll redo recording this with a seven, eight, nine pun later, but uh, that's one trouble. Another is that it doesn't loop. So if we wanted to go from the last number back to the first number, this is not the mechanism. We need a few more layers on top of that. If you're interested in these more advanced things, please do let me know in the comments and maybe that'll be uh, for a future tutorial. I love making these trips to Expression Town, so I hope you do too. And I hope this has helped explain how such a thing works and maybe you've learned a thing or two about expressions in general. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped. And if you had any troubles with this, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. I know expressions can be uh, kind of vexing at times. So I'm gonna put the expression that we used in its simplest form in the description so you can copy and paste that at your leisure. Just be aware that you may have to modify it, modify the outputs, modify the inputs to make it work for what you've got going on. Anyway, thank you so much for spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams tutorial channel, where we talk about After Effects, motion design, visual effects, all the good stuff. If you like learning about that kind of thing, then please subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications so that you know when new stuff happens. We get up new tutorials all the time, along with uh, live shows that you'll definitely want to hang out with as they're happening, and sometimes a longer series where we get to go deep on certain things. We went deep on pre-production one time, and now we're going into sound design. And as always, if you end up making something cool with what you learn on this channel, I would love to see it. So please get at me on Twitter, uh, tag me on Instagram. I'm at EC Abrams on those places. And if you do, then I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again and have a great day.